the last concept of this chapter is free radical polymerization. And I, it, it looks very similar to um, free radical uh, addition of HBr to alkenes uh, because it includes peroxides and also addition of molecules to um, pi bonds. So, so uh, if this was our unit, um, we're going to have lots of these reacting with each other and making a polymer. So polymer just means um, it's, it's one unit iterated over and over and over again. So, um, so why are polymers important? Maybe we'll start there real quick. Well, um, if you like anything that's plastic, uh, that is made of a polymer. So uh, water bottles, uh, toothbrushes. I always bring up toothbrushes because people used to have terrible oral hygiene because uh, toothbrushes used to be um, sterling silver, which was really expensive. So only the very wealthy could afford to brush their teeth. Um, but because of, uh, um, because of the uh, industry that makes polymers, um, now we can all have great oral hygiene, which is nice, uh, because we have plastic toothbrushes. Um, so, so how do polymers, uh, how, how does a polymer polymerization occur? Um, and, uh, and, and that's what we're, we're going to talk about now. So I should stop rambling about toothbrushes and get to it. Um, so, so here we have uh, a monomer. So this is a monomer. It's one. Mono means one. Poly means many. So one of these is going to come together with many of these to make a polymer. Um, and, and this is this is called styrene. Polystyrene is a, a very uh, um, you, uh, a very common polymer, uh, ubiquitous through every type of um, plastic that, that is out there. And, and it's all made of these monomers. Um, so this reaction is going to be a free radical, free radical polymerization. Um, how is it going to initiate? Oh, let's think back to the last reaction we learned about peroxides and how they initiate. Oh yeah, peroxides, the oxygen-oxygen single bond, really react really weak. So the initiation step here is just going to be the breaking of that bond homolytically to make OH radicals. Um, just like um, the last reaction that we learned, um, this is now going to react with the alkene. So um, it's going to bring its one electron up there. Um, this alkene is going to react with that. And essentially, again, we have the opportunity for us to create a radical on this side or this side. So let's let's draw both options out. So um, we either could have the OH added here with the radical there. So that would be if if we drew the, the hooked arrow to go like that. Um, or if we drew the hooked arrow to go to the other side like this, um, it would be this structure here. Um, so, uh, so, so here we have the radical in this position, here we have it in this position. So take a minute, think about which one is going to be more likely to form. Um, this is something that at this point in the chapter you should be able to predict pretty easily. Pause it, mark it, and come back when you've made your decision. Turns out that this is a primary radical, right? This is a secondary radical. And also, it's it's benzylic, so it's it's a, it's it's similar to an allylic one. We can think of all of these pi bonds as also um, being able to donate their electron density to spread out the radical character around this. So this is the more stable radical. So we'll cross that one out. Um, so this was the initiation step. Now we propagated. Um, we can now continue to propagate with more molecules of styrene. Um, on your paper, uh, on, your, on your notes, I have that this is uh, abbreviated PH for a phenyl ring. So this is the same thing as if I drew out the phenyl ring. So I'm going to start just drawing the abbreviation PH. Um, so this, this radical here can go and combine with this pi bond. And then we would put the radical right there. So if we look at that step, we now have this connected to here, another phenyl right there, and another radical right there. 
And this can really just continue and continue and continue until we hit a termination step. So let's let's show one more one more cycle. So we have more polystyrene around. We can get more of that reaction to occur. Uh, we will put um, another unit on here. Now we have a another rat another radical there. And again, like I said, this process is going to iterate over and over and over again. We're going to get n number of monomers. So this came from the monomer. This piece came from the monomer. This piece came from the monomer. Um, and actually, I, I have a little bit of a mistake in here. Um, let's just uh, fix that real quick. Um, we should have, I, I lost a carbon. So here, let's make sure we add that carbon on. Um, so this unit is going to repeat many, many times. So n could mean a thousand, n could mean a hundred, n could mean ten thousand, um, n could mean a million. Um, it's all going to be dependent on how the reactions run, how much of the monomer is in there, what the concentration is, those types of factors, until we hit the last step, the termination step. So um, we could have uh, more of this uh, free radical OH around. Um, that is going to terminate when it comes into contact with our big polymer chain. And that will give us our product. Here, and again, I'm going to put brackets around this unit and say n. There are an unlimited number of that unit right there. Um, so this would be a polystyrene polymer. This is a polystyrene polymer. Um, there are lots of different types of monomers. I'm just going to draw another one up here that, that many of you have heard of before. Um, Another monomer would be polyvinyl, or sorry, uh, polyvinyl chloride. So, so this is uh, this is a very common monomer. So poly, so so this would just be called vinyl chloride, and um, if if this polymerized, polymerized. We would have polyvinyl chloride which maybe some of you haven't heard of that but probably most of you have heard of PVC PVC piping um, that is a pol polymer of this monomer here so um, so that is uh, is um, another another polymer um, so the last, so that, that's the free radical polymerization. Um, that's most of page 13. The last thing on page 13 was just um, working some more examples. So the first example was taking this unit here and doing an allylic bromination because it was NBS and light. Um, so uh, again, we learned this. Uh, before we learn the, the stuff in this video, it's going to form the allylic um, radical, which the allylic radical is going to be present there and there. So this is going to make a mixture of products. And, and take a minute to pause the video and try and predict the products. Um, but the products are going to be this bromide here, which again, this, this, this bromide could be on the front or the back. So technically this represents two structures. And then also, once we form the radical in, in this position here, uh, we have to note that um, it also is going to have radical character on this carbon up here. So we could also generate this bromide here. Um, so th those are the answers. Um, if, if, if you want to just uh, skip ahead to the next answer. You can go go forward a minute. I just wanted to note that that's because again we form this radical species here, which shows that we have radical character there, and we can draw those resonance arrows to show that we also have radical character there. So the bromide is going to add to each position 
where we have radical character. Um, okay, so what were the other two? The next one is HBr and peroxides being added to this structure here. Um, if you want to, you could go back a video and look at how that works. Um, but the peroxides version of the HBr addition, so I'm going to write peroxides here. Um, the, the, the main difference compared to our normal HBr addition is the normal HBr addition adds the bromine to the more substituted position. Here, we would be adding the bromine to the less substituted position. So um, that would be the product of that one there. And I'll just do the last one right here. Um, the last question was taking the same molecule here and treating that with um, NBS and light again. Um, so again here, we can form uh, multiple products. This is going to again be an allylic bromination. Um, so we're going to brominate at the allylic positions. Um, so this is an allylic position, this is an allylic position, this is an allylic position. This is going to make quite a few products. Um, hold on a second. I think there's someone at my door. I'll, I'll finish in a second. All right, so again, that said two products that are forming the fastest. So which ones are forming the fastest? Um, so um, what you have to think about is what are going to be the most stable radicals. The most stable radicals are going to be the ones that form the fastest. So um, I'm actually going to erase that product. Um, so, if we were to remove this allylic hydrogen, um, we would form this radical species here, which is, um, if, if we form this radical, it's going to have character as a secondary radical, but also as a tertiary radical, and you can again draw those resonance structures. Um, so this we'll call uh, HB, HB. And this would be HA. If we remove HA, um, we're going to form this radical. It's a secondary radical that has character at this position and also at this position. So essentially, we have a secondary, secondary radical. Since this is a secondary, tertiary radical, this one is actually going to form even faster than the one above. Um, what would be the slowest forming radical here? It would be if we remove this one. So since the, since the question says two products forming fastest and ignore stereochem, um, we can say that uh, removing A and B is going to be better than removing HC because that would be a primary secondary radical, the least stable of all of them. Um, so whether or not uh, you have the resonance structure on either side, these are going to lead to this bromide here. Um, and these are going to lead to a mixture of two different bromides. So, um, so I probably shouldn't have had the word two products forming fastest here. I'll have to update that in future years. I could say the three products forming the fastest. Um, so if the radical adds, or if the bromide adds to that position, you'd have the bromine there. And if the radical ha adds the bromine in this position, we would have the bromine on that position. So uh, these would be the three products that form the fastest um, in this allylic bromination reaction. So these are a good, those, those last three questions are a good set of um, predicting the products with these different types of reactions. So, um, so let me know again if there are any questions and I'll talk to you later.